Some of the best memories we have are when family and friends get together for the holidays. And those holidays always mean food. And there's no bigger food holiday than Thanksgiving dinner. It's an important dinner, and it can be very intimidating if it's the first time that you have to make Thanksgiving dinner. We're going to help make it easy for you. We're going to make it a perfect Thanksgiving dinner for you as well. I'm Gene Honda. We're joined in the kitchen with Wynn. Wynn, what are some of your memories of Thanksgiving dinners? Well, Gene, thanks for having me. And I would like to share a memory with you, but not necessarily my favorite memory. It's more of a vivid memory I have of being at my aunt's house. I'm with all my cousins, and we're running around, and we're playing games, and we're building up this great appetite. We go to sit down at the Thanksgiving dinner table. My uncle proudly goes to cut into the turkey, and it's almost raw. And I'll tell you, for my first Thanksgiving dinner, I don't want that to be the memory that my guests take away from the dinner table. Can you help me out? We can help you. We'll make it perfect. We'll make it fun. We'll make it easy. And it'll be a great memory for you and your family. A perfect Thanksgiving dinner will help you, and we'll help you. So sounds, let's get started. It sounds great. Earlier this week, Wynn went shopping for all of these great ingredients. You can get her shopping list on our website. Now, while a holiday dinner may seem intimidating, it's actually pretty simple if you keep to the basics. Turkeys are widely available during the holiday season, both fresh and frozen. If using a frozen bird, it must be purchased at least three days prior to the big day, placed on a plate in the refrigerator, and allowed to thaw in its unopened package. It will take three to four days to thaw a 12 pound turkey. The thawed turkey, or a fresh turkey, should not be kept in the refrigerator for more than two days before cooking. Do not refreeze any poultry or other meats that have been thawed. A 12 pound turkey will amply feed six people with leftovers. A rule of thumb is to calculate three quarters to one pound of turkey per serving. All right, you went shopping. Did you find everything you needed? I did, Gene. I knew that I needed a 12-pound turkey. Right. And I noticed that some of the turkeys had this pop-up timer, and some of them didn't. And I noticed that when I've watched cooking shows, that sometimes the cooks leave the pop-up timer in, and some of them take them out. No, leave it in. Temperature is the key towards cooking any turkey or any meat. The temperature is more important than the time. So whether you use a meat thermometer, an instant read thermometer, or the pop-up timer, you should go by the temperature. And the pop-up timer is just as accurate as any of those thermometers. So leave it in. It's a good idea. John, I'm having my first Thanksgiving dinner. I'm having six people over. And I know they're all going to want to take leftovers home. So can you help me pick out a good-sized turkey? I sure can, Win. I've got a nice one right here. Okay. It's about 12 pounds. And it's got this beautiful pop-up timer. Oh. And when this pops up, it's done. So it's very easy. And you'll have some nice leftovers. Oh, perfect. So I think this would be great. Thank you okay? so much. And have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. You too. You're welcome. Well, the butcher actually recommended this turkey with a pop-up timer. That's so I have one less thing to worry about. Yeah, one less thing to worry about. It's always better when cooking Thanksgiving dinner. OK, by the way, what else do you want on the menu? Well, I would like it to be traditional. I would like the dressing to go along with the turkey. I would like the mashed potatoes and gravy, a green bean side okay. dish, cranberry sauce, yeah. and a pumpkin pie that would make my mom's toes curl. We can do all of that. And if you'd like to follow along, you can find the recipe on our website. All right, so that's the menu. What time do you want to eat? Well, my family likes to kind of goof around in the morning. We watch the parade. We play football. So I'm thinking around 2 o'clock. Is that possible? 2 o'clock is very possible. It means we'll get started cooking at about 11 o'clock. We'll go through all of the basic ingredients, take you through all the different dishes, make sure everything comes out on time. So the first thing we have to do is preheat the oven to 325 degrees. Now, Gene, I know what the pop-up timer is, right. but what is that? That's a food-safe plastic truss that holds the legs in place while the turkey's oh. roasting in the oven. And when you're done cooking, it comes right off. Oh. Okay, inside the turkey, usually in the back, you will find the neck and then the gizzards and the liver. Those should be removed before you cook them. Okay. You can discard these or you can use them as a base for a stock. We're going to discard these and use canned chicken broth for our gravy. But if you'd like the recipe on how to do this from scratch, just check onto our website. Once you've rinsed the turkey, pat it dry with a paper towel. Right? Then you can add some chopped celery and onions. You can put that right inside the cavity of the turkey. You can put some others inside the pan. Then on the turkey itself, add some butter, rub it onto the turkey skin, or you can use vegetable oil. 
okay. and sprinkle on some chopped fresh herbs, or you can use poultry seasoning. Okay. And when you're done with all that, one very important thing, wash your hands with hot soapy water and paper towels, and do the same with all the counter surface and even the cutting board. Okay. Okay? Now that the oven has been preheated to 325 degrees, we can put the turkey in. After an hour or so, base it with the accumulated juices or with melted butter or a mixture of melted butter and white wine. Continue basting every 20 to 30 minutes. Don't be impatient. The timer will pop when the turkey's up to temperature. Gene, I've seen plastic roasting bags. Do they work? Yeah, and the pop-up timers work with them too. Plastic roasting bags eliminate the need to clean out the roasting pan. But you know, they don't produce a crispy skin on the turkey. Mm. So the decision is up to whoever's doing the cooking. Okay, then, let's get started on the side dishes. Okay. I know you made the pumpkin pie yesterday, right? I did. I think it turned out really well, That's and I great. think it's going to save me a lot of time today. One other time saver for you was you used a prepared pie crust. I did. Right? Then we took some canned pumpkin, mm -hmm. mixed it with some brown sugar, mm -hmm. evaporated milk, yes. a couple of eggs, mm -hmm. and then some spices. We have cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, and clove. Yep. Whisk that all together in a bowl, pour that in the unbaked pie shell, mm -hmm. let it bake, let it cool, and then all you have to do is cover it with plastic wrap. Now the recipe is on the website, including a recipe if you'd like to make your own pie crust, right? What's even easier, have your guests bring dessert. Have that someone that you know idea. bring the that pumpkin pie idea. or the dessert to the dinner, because they like sharing too, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. And of course, the traditional topping for this would be whipped cream, or some form of whipped topping. My favorite part. Okay. Now, it's been about an hour since we put the turkey in the oven, so I think it's time for us to check the turkey okay. and baste it, too. Okay. All right, now it's time for my favorite side dish, and that's the dressing. Right. You know, Gene, I've always wondered, what is the difference between dressing and stuffing? It's simple. Dressing is when you take this mixture and bake it outside of the bird. Oh, okay. okay. When you take the same mixture and put it inside the cavity, and then put the whole turkey in the oven, that's called stuffing. Oh, hence the name mm -hmm. stuffing. It's simple. Yes, but food experts now recommend that you actually bake this mixture outside of the turkey. That way it cooks more thoroughly. All right. One other side benefit too, the turkey cooks faster with the stuffing outside of the bird. Oh, I like that. All right. So let's make the dressing, shall we? Okay. Right. You saute some celery and some onions in the pan with some butter. Okay. All right. Take that mixture that's been cooked and pour it over these bread cubes. Now, we bought these bread cubes at the store, okay? Then you can start seasoning it. You can use some sage, some thyme, poultry seasoning if you like, of course, salt and pepper. And then we're going to take some chicken broth to moisten the whole mixture. Sounds right. good. Now, here's where you can get creative. If you'd like, you can add some cooked mushrooms. Mm. You can add some raisins or some apples. Whatever you'd like, you can make it as plain or as fancy as you choose. You know, I think my family might be more on the plain side. That's fine. There's still plenty of flavor there. Let's do it this way then. You take a buttered casserole dish. Okay. Take this whole mixture and pour that in there. All right. And then bake that in the oven for 45 to 60 minutes at 325 degrees. You know, I just remembered I don't have a nice casserole dish. That's all right. And any oven safe container will do. Oh. All right. And then all you have to do is cover that. If you don't have a cover, you can use aluminum foil. Okay. All right. Then, if you like a crunchy dressing or stuffing like this, I do. All you have to do is take that foil or cover off for about 20 minutes before it comes out of the oven. All right, now for cranberry sauce. Okay. This can be made ahead of time and stored at room temperature for even a couple of hours. Okay. Right? This is canned whole cranberry sauce. Mm -hmm. To add a little zip to it, all you have to do is take some orange zest. Oh. Now that's the orange part of the peel, not the white part, but the okay. outside orange part, right? Okay. Two tablespoons of that and two tablespoons of orange juice. Okay. okay. Or you can mix in two teaspoons of vanilla extract because that takes some of the tartness out of it and makes it smoother too. You know, right. I like this idea better because my aunt used to just dump it out of the can and yeah. chop it out and there was it was tart. Yeah, and a, right. lot of times, great. a lot of times that's everyone's exposure to cranberry sauce and this is a much better recipe this Yeah. Way. Well, Gene, it looks like we've moved on to the mashed potatoes. Yeah, then it's real easy to do. You peel your potatoes, cube them, and then place them in a large pot filled and covered with cold water. Okay. Right? Then cook them for about 20 minutes or so. Stick them with a fork to see that they're done. Make sure they're tender. Then drain the pot completely full of water. Then start mashing them either with a potato masher or you can use an electric mixer, too. Right. What about a food processor? No, you know, I wouldn't use a food processor no? because okay. it tends to overmix the mixture and it becomes gluey and stiff. You don't mm. want that in your potatoes, right. okay? As it is, you're going to mash them 
and then add butter, salt, pepper, and some milk. And as you mix that together, you shouldn't over mix it that way either because it can still get gluey and stiff. Right? Okay. So it's about uh, 20 minutes, start to finish, right? Ooh, and they look great. Now, if you do that in advance, you can keep them warm on the stove, right? So that you can warm them up right before you take the turkey out of the oven. Speaking of the turkey. Yeah, uh, okay, check the clock. Hasn't been three hours yet, right? No. But if you'll notice, the pop-up timer has popped up. So we'll take the turkey out of the oven now. Remember, it's not about the time, it's all about the temperature. Okay. Okay? You know, Gene, I think we might be a little bit ahead of schedule. That's okay, that's okay. Good. Turkey's very forgiving that way. All you have to do is take the turkey out of the oven, cover it with aluminum foil, and let it rest in a warm place. It really should rest for at least 20 minutes and up to an hour because that way it's easy to carve. And in that hour, we can work on the mashed potatoes, the gravy, and the beans. Wait, go back a second. What did you, you said a warm place? Kitchen counter is just fine. Oh, okay. Besides, we're going to use the roasting pan anyway. Okay. Okay. Why? What, what's next? Well, next we'll work on the green beans. Oh, right? okay. We take a microwave-safe bowl and our frozen green beans, throw in a couple of pats of butter, some sliced almonds, some salt. Toss that mixture around, cover it with plastic wrap. Then, when we're ready for dinner, we put it in the microwave for a couple of minutes or follow the directions on the package. Okay. Right? Then to serve, all we can do is squeeze some fresh lemon juice on top of it. That sounds good. Right. Can we do the gravy next? Sure, we can do the gravy. We take the turkey, take it out of the roasting pan and put it on a platter, cover it with aluminum foil. Okay. Now all those juices that are there on the bottom of the roasting mm -hmm. pan, they become the base for our gravy. So we pour that into this measuring cup and add all those little scrapings from the bottom of the pan, oh, okay. those little brown pieces, because that's flavor and that's color for the gravy. Great. Right? Then we add chicken broth to fill to about four cups, and that becomes our liquid. Four cups. Right? Take a large saucepan, put it over medium heat, and we saute our onions in butter until they're translucent. Right? Then we take and whisk in flour just to thicken that up. Okay. Right? Now, slowly add the liquid to the saucepan and whisk constantly for about 10 to 15 minutes or so so that you don't get lumps in the gravy. Okay. Heat that up, and you have gravy. All you have to do is add mushrooms or spices, salt, Whatever you like. That's it. That's it? That's all there is to it. Now, check your side dishes. Make sure that they're hot. If you have to, you can always zap them in the microwave before your guests arrive. If there's other side dishes or items you'd like to include on your Thanksgiving dinner menu, check our website because you have ideas and we have recipes there for you. That sounds great. Okay, you had your big day today. I did. Right, one last thing, though, all right? Don't turn down help in the kitchen. You're right. Ask your guests to come help. Let them come help you. Okay. It's a way to be able to talk with them, mm -hmm. spend time with them, and then that way you're not just the cook, you're part of the event. You know, Gene, things are looking really good right mm -hmm. now. I feel like we kept the hot food hot, the cold food cold, mm -hmm. we cleaned up as we went along, and with the menu that you and I planned together, prepared some things ahead of time. I think I'm ready for my guests. I think you are too. Let's go greet them. You set the table early in the day and you've added some pretty holiday touches to finish things off. You have everything ready to go and some hungry people that have been smelling all those wonderful aromas. They're ready to eat. Well, let's eat.